Mr. Beast just destroyed his reputation even more. He's now being called out by OG YouTubers like Dan TDM, who I don't think has ever spoken on any drama ever. Dan is like the most wholesome drama free YouTuber of all time, and even he had to call out Mr. Beast. So we're gonna go over all of the updates since my last video three whole weeks ago. Still no response from Mr. Beast, by the way. Two months have passed since the drama has started. Apparently he's going for the silent strategy. Uh, we'll see how that works out. Anyways, yeah, that's very interesting. And that's mainly why I'm interested in this topic. That assuming this works out, then we will see nothing but going forward. Like, if anything happened, just, just say nothing. And I I know, like, there are other uh, creators and possible other companies that got into hot water. And what they do is just say nothing, do nothing, just try to lay low as much as possible and give it, like, some time. I mean, it could be, like, months and, or maybe a year tops, and no one cares, right? <laughs> Well, it's not actively raging about the issue. Like, they could do whatever. Change nothing. Just lay low. And, and it doesn't matter. Anyways, let's start with the new collab between Mr. Beast, KSI, and Logan Paul. Mr. Beast, KSI, and Logan Paul are releasing Lunchly, a Lunchables competitor. It will feature Prime, Feasibles chocolate, and a variation of food. And then we got a bunch of promo pictures. Here we got the Lunchly, a bunch of Feasibles bars. We got the Turkey Stackums, the Fiesta Nachos, and the pizza. Here's what people are saying. This will definitely be less healthy than Lunchables. I wouldn't consider... <laughs> <laughs> anything tied to Logan Paul. Wow, more subpar, cheaply made shit with YouTuber branding on it. You're gonna have to take out a loan to afford this. Here's a video of their announcement stream. Perhaps you are familiar with this product. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, so if you look closely, this product has a candy, mm. an entree, mm. and a drink. Wait, wait, wait. A drink? A drink, some chocolate, yep. some chocolate, and an entree. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. What's your thoughts on it? What's Interesting advertising strategy, though. So they are directly comparing their product to another product and obviously slapping their brand name on it. I mean, what usually would be happening in the past that the brand would be paying them uh for the promotion but they say screw that we are replacing that brand but they're also making them the direct competitor because it could be hard to get across the value proposition generally it's like oh we got this product but how does it fit in like no this is like a launchables replacement so that's pretty easy to understand oh, okay. wait can you do the face too uh -huh. Oh my gosh! Um, so, okay. perhaps you piece this together. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to introduce you to Lunchly. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Okay, sorry about the 140p quality. Apparently, three borderline billionaires can't seem to afford a proper camera and connection for the stream. Basically, nobody is happy about it. is the word. You see this quite a lot with those who are especially elite. That they try to seem approachable. Right? It's like, oh yeah, look at me. I'm just like oh, just a regular YouTuber guy who's uh, shooting, uh, shooting in like uh, 720p, right? Uh, because people tend to reserve those who are kind of like have a lot, right? Also, they might be completely out of touch, right? And that's not so great. And if you have so much, then you don't even know how out of touch you are. You just keep pissing people off and... You don't even know why. Happy about this. Here's some more replies. Yay, pieces of shit using their fame to sell unhealthy and horrible products to children. Great. Reply to the allegations instead of making more businesses. Another scam. Yeah, but if this is a, like a problem, then a lot of people are kind of committing this exact same act. Another scam product to mislead little kids into. These lawsuits are going to crush them. Okay, so can we just talk about how Mr. Beast was just accused of marketing his feasible chocolate as healthy and then changing the formula to adding more sugar than his competitor? Yeah, I mean, just calling it healthy is, is not great. Because, like, that, that can be objectively evaluated. I think is more sugar means more addiction. Sugar is addicting as hell. Petter. You should stay away from it. Chocolate, making it even more unhealthy. And then his response to the situation is to release Lunchly, probably the worst name thing on the planet, not gonna lie. And um, likely, you know, in my opinion, probably going to be ultra processed garbage that allegedly may possibly potentially cause bajillion issues for people who are addicted to junk food, especially kids who are suffering from the absolutely insane insane industry of fast food everywhere. Now this lunchly announcement was so bad that even Dan TDM called him out. And if you know anything about Dan, he's an OG YouTuber who does not speak on drama ever. He says, what happened to YouTubers, man? I can't not say anything anymore. This is selling stuff for the sake of making money, simple. But how does this benefit their fans? This is selling- Yeah, but that, that, that was always the game. Does Dan not know that? Money, simple. But how does this benefit their fans? This is selling crap to kids who don't know better than to trust the people who are selling it to them. Do better. And he got like a hundred- I mean, if I was Mr. Beast and I wanted to, well, I suppose, I, I'm assuming a lot of things here, but I wanted to sell a product that kind of like has the air of healthiness about it, but I also need to make some money. I guess you can go for like a protein bar or something. I mean, the, the healthier kind, I guess. Maybe that would work out. 
100k mm -hmm. likes here. We got a bunch of other YouTubers saying, my man, they probably taste absolutely awful too. Why not teach kids healthy eating habits? They're comparing their product to Lunchables, which in itself is highly processed crap. None of them are passionate about health towards fans, only their wallets. So disappointing. Yeah, but like healthy stuff is not that great because like I, I tend to eat healthy stuff, but like what do I buy? Like fruits? Yeah. Okay. Fruits and vegetables. Like I bought like a, a five kilogram bag of lentils. I mean, that's really hard to uh, sell as a product. <laughs> so disappointing. They always promote it like it's healthy too, lol. That's exactly what Mr. Beast did for the Feastables thing and then he turned it around. I'm gonna be tasting plastic in this, bro. Cook them. <laughs> Frauds. Now, Dan is the absolute goat. He raised an entire generation along with uh, Jacksepticeye, Markiplier, and PewDiePie. He was one of the gaming YouTubers that was always on the top and he was always really entertaining and super wholesome as well. So you know that when he... Yeah, that's interesting. What an interesting uh, quad we had who probably had a positive influence on uh, a bunch of uh, kids. I, I could say kids, but I, I watched... I guess uh, the favorite of my uh, of these people would be uh, PewDiePie. I watched some of his videos, and uh, I guess he was okay. I, especially after his uh, well annoying, getting scared at horror games phase. After that, he was pretty good. <laughs> at least uh, more relatable to someone older. And he actually feels the need to step in and call something out. It's got to be bad. And I have to Let's agree, man. Mr. Beast said he wants to help people. In the past, he's literally said, okay, I want to create healthy products instead of, you know, unhealthy junk like what everybody else is doing. And what has he done? He started a burger chain, a chocolate bar. And now this Lunchly, which is just processed trash. Like, does that sound like someone who cares about you? That someone who cares about the kids or whatever? Like, this dude has... Well, he, I think he cares about me. He cares about me so much. Oh, man has a billion dollars and is still pulling stunts like this. And can we just talk about who he's collaborating with? Logan Paul and KSI. Both of these people have been exposed by CoffeeZilla for allegedly, according to CoffeeZilla, scamming their audiences with crypto. These are people with horrible, horrible track records who are just trying to take your money and have done many, many horrible things. I think everybody remembers Logan Paul's forest incident. I don't know how he possibly got a career after that, but he's still going scamming, scamming, scamming. You know, starting these BS companies, they're just absolutely unhealthy trash. Like if you're out there feeding Prime Deer- I think what of events should matter less. Just that, well, this is just my take. That, that he, well, he, he's not that possibly an annoying person, but I mean, just that he went into a forest and acted inappropriately just the one time is uh, not a massive deal for me. <clears throat> I'm your kids, I question your parenting, all right? I, I haven't seen it, but like, I, I was just, uh, I just heard about it. Just gonna say, honestly, in the past two months, Mr. Beast has also been exposed for absolutely scummy practices, according to Dogpack 404, you know, hiring registered offenders, criminals, allegedly illegal lotteries, you know, whenever people have SA scandals, moving them around the company instead of just firing them, you know, all the stuff we covered. So I can't say I'm surprised, this is actually very fitting. Three of the most untrustworthy people on the planet collaborating. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Anyways, let me know what you guys think about Lunchly in the comment section below. Like, are you ever gonna try it? Or are you gonna give it to your kids or something? By the way, on the Lunchly no. site, hidden in their privacy policy, it says the site is not for people under the age of 16. Bro, Jimmy's fan base logan paul's fan base and ksi's fan base is not over the 8 of 16 let's be honest right? I, I don't think uh older people would s survive this diet so yeah if i eat that i would be dead in probably months <laughs> <laughs> All right, so who exactly are these Lunchables for? If it's not for kids under the age of 16, that's the same thing you said for Prime. Oh yeah, no, no, but this is not a kid's beverage. Like, who are the ones freaking consuming it though? Like, you know what you're doing. Anyways, moving on to even more Mr. Beast allegations. Another former employee has come out exposing Mr. Beast in an interview. His name is Trey, and he's actually an editor for Jacksepticeye. And apparently, he worked for Mr. Beast for three whole years and had many like important responsibilities there. He tweeted out, "Yep, I worked with Mr. Beast for a considerable amount of time from 2018 to 2021." This video sheds light on Jimmy firing me, refusing to work for more than 45 hours a week for him. Incredibly illegal of him and his team to do. This after he called me incredibly angry about a sponsored video that was never going to do well in the first place, demanding me to lose sleep and achieve absolute perfection out of a video, while also putting in zero work himself to do so. This is a video by another commentary creator called the asher show you can check out the whole thing on his channel i'm just gonna go over a few parts over here so basically trey talks about how overworked he was he talks about james warren the secret ceo allegedly handing handing out adderall to make the employees work more um and a bunch of more insane things how long did you work for jimmy ford almost three years i started off with me editing for beast reacts in 2018 did a lot of work to really prove myself on that and then became editor and post-production manager moved out to north carolina worked on more main channel videos they wanted me to work on main channel videos but they also wanted me to head this other subsidiary company they had called Horizontal Productions. During that time, I was post-production manager. I was also production manager. I was also an editor. And I was also a retention specialist. Like, wow. And yeah, so I had four main jobs. I had four full-time jobs. Like, I worked Thanksgiving, Christmas, my 30th birthday, 4th of July. Every single holiday you can think of, I worked those holidays. James Warren, I'm, I think he's always been the CEO of Mr. Beast. To your knowledge, did you know about him offering substances to people to stay and wait mm -hmm. work longer? Yep. Yep. Adderall. There was a time in uh, summer of 2020, it might have been fall, uh, where Adderall was being passed around the company. There were uh, high, higher up employees that were offering it to other employees just so they could work all night and edit videos all night. Um, so that way they could like stop complaining and stop sleeping. Um, and it was investigated internally within the company. But how far does that go? <laughs> like James Warren had to be. <laughs> well, not just hire more guys. Presumably these guys are getting paid. Pulled out of. I mean, it wouldn't be too suspicious that in a smaller operation, you have to wear a lot of hats, I guess.
of the company's story for like a week and then the next week he was right back in i believe that's one of james warren's friends named uh devin leach and that's him admitting right there that like he is part of the crew that's passing around adderall in the company uh and by the way in that message john smith is jimmy and it's funny that my proof of that being jimmy is <laughs> this this message that i found where he sent an article of his wiki feed, wiki feed? confirming that that's him <laughs> yes all right just more and more insane things coming out about their work culture i mean it's one thing to you know inspire your employees to work hard you know never take no for an answer stuff like that but handing out drugs that is just absolutely crazy that's like milking every last drop of your employee's sanity in my opinion that's definitely overkill and nobody really needs to work that much in fact you're probably just like compromising their work if you're pushing them that far anyways trey goes on to talk about laquoia hill and sort of yeah you, you sometimes see this never take no for an answer uh as a salesman philosophy uh i, I don't like on, to be on the receiver and for it that or that I, I, I guess at least i don't think it's a good strat <laughs> sort of corroborates that story basically saying that he was fired for essaying his assistant and basically he was still getting like shuffled around the company he also talks about how there was another jake weddle situation with the fbi video where they crashed a car in a video hired a psychopath and had to redo the video when the sequel <laughs> did they hire like a real guy i mean it wouldn't surprise me if they were an actual psychopath assault allegations or accusations i mean maybe they weren't a psychopath but if you expose someone to a lot of violence then they could be somewhat desensitized. Started in 2021. It was announced in the company that LaCoya was taking a family leave. LaCoya was then, quote unquote, let go in 2021, but then secretly shuffled within the company to a lower position where I guess he wasn't as visible in documents. Eventually promoted to another position of power. Uh, up until, you know, very recently, whenever they had to restructure the company with the leaked email from within Mr. Beast's team, I actually went to therapy after Mr. Beast because it was like that impactful for me. And when I was telling them that, I started crying, hunted by an FBI agent video in 2021. And what people don't know is that that was the second time that that was recorded. Very similar to the Jake Weddle story. The first time that they recorded it, they didn't vet the FBI agent talent properly. And it ended up that that guy was a psychopath and like bumped into the car that Ava and Chandler and all the other talent were in and like made them drive off the road and crash. Yeah, it definitely doesn't seem like a safe work environment, but anything for another banger video, you know, just need a... What, was that like scripted or impulsively he did that? Huh. Yeah, need another hundred million views, bro. That's all that matters here. But yeah, that was uh, Trey's testimony there, having worked for Mr. Beast for three whole years, having several major roles at his company. It's a pretty trusted source there. Anyways, moving on to the next part of people accusing Mr. Beast of faking videos, except this includes the philanthropy videos as well, which is a very serious allegation because, you know, if you're going to be faking charity stuff, that is obviously one of the worst things you can do. But this allegation is by a YouTuber named Snoop. Uh, the video is titled, Times Mr. Beast Faked His Philanthropy Videos. From I built a hundred wells in Africa to a thousand blind people see for the first time, here are a few of Mr. Beast's charitable videos where he was criticized for faking it, misleading the audience, and being more focused on gaining views and profit. Just from a viewer perspective, I always assume that Mr. Beast is greatly scripting his videos. Wouldn't that be obvious? Of course, he could be claiming that he isn't, just to possibly hype it up, but it doesn't look like it. Profits than genuine philanthropy. This is all just alleged information that's all available publicly at this stage, and I am just reporting it. Now, let's start with I built 100 wells in Africa. This is the first of 100 wells we're gonna build in this video. Oh, what a if you watch the video and zoom in right here, this is well 28 and well 29. There is no picture for well number 29, and again, well 28 and well 67 are the same, but the angle is just different. It is somewhat suspicious, however, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's see what's next. The second problem is you see him claiming he will build wells in Kenya, we built 20 more wells in Kenya, then proceeding to show a picture that clearly shows Zimbabwe. Again, not something you should be seeing after spending thousands of dollars to build a well. Hey, I'll push you off of this. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Under control. We built 20 more wells in Kenya. This is the picture mentioned in the post where Mr. Beast mentioned Kenya but showed a picture from Zimbabwe. And finally, before he says well 69, he actually skips a picture of 68. There was no picture for well 68. And after giving away the bikes, we continue building wells until we reach well number 69. And yes, that's right. There are no pictures for well number 68. So why are these pictures skipped? Editing mistakes or purposely removed because those missing wells were never installed? And this is a huge red flag, especially when you're spending millions of dollars and using donation money from other people. It becomes a more logical choice to lie about the number of wells to make it seem like he did more than he actually did. Using fake numbers rather than fillers creates the illusion that there is a lot more new stuff to be seen than there actually is, thus increasing engagement. Building 100 wells in the time span of at most two weeks is questionable in itself. Furthermore, the work doesn't just stop at just installing a well you need to maintain repair yeah i guess if you were like installed like 76 valves i mean it would be better to say that than just to exaggerate it to 100. Mm. still he, he did something apparently apparently <laughs> and make sure it's working after three or five years. Okay, mm. so the evidence here is obviously not definitive because it's just from the- I'm not sure he ever committed himself to be the eternal maintainer of those wells. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think that's on him. From the video itself and whatever Jimmy's put out. It probably would have been more useful just to teach some people to do the well digging themselves. Well, assuming they can- uh... <laughs> I don't know what the machine is called. The, the well digging machine. Let's go with that. And they just give, he just gives them a well digging machine and like and uh, I don't know some tanks uh, to store the water and that's it. Bank tanks with pipes and that's it. It doesn't need to be there. 
it's put out there. They're just trying to draw conclusions based on that. There's no definitive way to say that he didn't actually build all those wells. Maybe it was cut for editing or retention or something. Depends on how you want to interpret those sort of uh, editing choices there. You know, I'm open for nothing sinister there, obviously, as always. But uh, the stuff about maintaining it is pretty important because, you know, just doing these stunts like building 100 wells and stuff and moving on is not enough because these sort of things need to be maintained long term. So the question needs to be asked, are Mr. Beast employees still going back there to check if they need any help? If, uh, you know, if something malfunctions or, you know, doing like yearly maintenance or something like that, right? And the next part is he didn't commit to that, so uh, that that would be just a uh, just a plus. Uh, honestly, I, no one could expect that, and uh, those committees should be heavily incentivized to upkeep those elves, although they might not have the skills is definitely more damaging to Mr. Beast's reputation. Dogpack mentioned this as well. He talks about Team C's being a complete PR stunt, considering they didn't remove that much plastic at all. Then the numbers pretty much speak for themselves here. They basically did nothing. Team C's aims to remove 30 million pounds of plastic from the oceans. In sensible units, that's about 13,600 tons, which sounds like a lot, but not when compared to the 150 million tons of plastic in the ocean. 13,600 tons is, at most, about 0.01% of all the plastic in the ocean. In fact, if we assume that 8 million tons is added to the oceans every year, again, an underestimate, then over the three-year lifespan of Team C's removing 13,600 tons, 24 million tons of plastic waste will be added to the oceans. Or to the but another way, Team C's will remove from the oceans in three years that which is added in under 15 hours. Team C's is also teamed up. Honestly, it wouldn't be that bad if it was just some kind of like like a spark to maybe like do something about the seas. Uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking. So for that purpose, it, it could be very valuable. But it does seem to be strictly existing for optics. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, just... Just objective results wise, it's kind of like you worrying about whether you're using plastic bags. Teamed up with one of the most controversial organizations in the world, known as the Ocean Cleanup. Coca Cola is also a sponsor of the Ocean Cleanup, and they're one of the top, <laughs> top five companies who contribute to 50% of the world's plastic pollution. So, in simple words, these projects are not focused on the root cause, which is plastic pollution, and instead they're just publicity stunts. Yeah, I mean, if Coca Cola is sponsoring your shit, I, I cannot trust you, bro. Like, these are literally the guys that were doing all of the plastic pollution, and you expect me to believe that they want to save the environment suddenly? Please, it's all about profits for them. And yeah, these are pretty. <laughs> suddenly, please. Please, it's all about profit. Hello, I like money. It's for them. And yeah, these are pretty fair points that they just did not make an impact. And they marketed it like, oh, I'm saving the ocean. Just donate some money and I'm literally going to save the ocean here, guys. But actually, they ended up doing absolutely nothing. Now, obviously, their defense for this is that, oh, we're just inspiring other people to pick up trash and stuff like that. Yeah, that, I think that could be valid. But that is literally doing nothing as well, because majority of the pollution in the world is done by these absolutely mega companies like Coca-Cola. And individual people trying to do anything does absolutely nothing. In fact, they're just gaslighting the shit out of people, thinking that they can make a difference. No, what I want to see is Mr. Beast coming over to becoming a revolutionary. Let's go. Mr. Beast versus Coca-Cola. A difference when they actually cannot ever. Moving on to another video, Snoop talks about Mr. Beast faking his regular videos. Now this is becoming just blatantly obvious now, even in his latest men versus women survival video. Apparently the Yeah, but I don't think that really takes away from it necessarily. I mean you for me, again, I, I just assume that the videos were scripted and Mr. Beast might be claiming that they are not. But that's kind of mm, well, that's a good question because he might take away from it. Mm, still. I just always assumed that they were scripted. Apparently the women won because they had literally trained survivalists on the women's team from like Naked and Afraid, right? People have been doing this for years. I mean, all the guys were just random dudes who had no idea what- If you just start to, well, if you ever try to just do things impulsively, just like, you know, just things happen as they as they will, uh, yeah, it's gonna be a mess. So, I mean, it probably would not lead to good videos. It would, well, Jimmy could poss possibly do it, but it would lead to him wasting a lot of money with videos that did not work out, right? Also, these videos are kind of tricky too, because how long can you really keep people in the forest? I actually seen this video, but how long can you keep people in the forest? Because let's suppose you, you kept them there for like a year. They would be nutritionally deficient, most likely. But on, on the other side, this is kind of like uh, presented as almost like a big challenge. But keep in mind that we used to have like Boy Scouts who just spend the entire summer in the forest. So doing so. Obviously unfair challenges. And this is all because of PR because that's all Mr. Beast cares about. Oh, the men cannot win. We can't allow the guys to win in any challenge like this because it would be bad PR. Yeah, also in this challenge, assuming that there's nothing to do but just to wait around and see who can last longer, and it's just a lot of the who can, but basically, who needs less calories. So, as, well, this challenge, because I've seen it, I mean, uh, the the women were essentially destined to win, unless they somehow quit, because they need less calories.
PR. It's so cringe. Just do it organically. You know, make it fair and just publish the result, right? It's like saying your videos are not fake, not scripted, not fixed, not rigged, and then you're pulling shit like this. It's so obvious, dude. Anyways, here's a couple more videos that were allegedly faked. From his latest upload, Seven Days Stranded in a Cave, to I Survived Seven Days in an Abandoned City, these are just a couple of instances where Mr. Beast has been accused of faking his videos. These are only allegations. Now, let's start with Seven Days Stranded in a Cave. I don't normally do intros like this, but I'm currently descending hundreds of feet into a cave that runs over five kilometers deep into the earth. And whether we like it or not, as soon as my friends and I touch the ground, we are officially traded here for the next seven days. That might have been the scariest thing I've ever done. Turns out this cave is a tourist attraction in New Zealand known as Waitomo Glowworm Caves. As per Wikipedia, this cave is known for its glowworm species found exclusively in New Zealand. In fact, you can find several comments saying the same thing. Is that Waitomo Caves? It's Waitomo Cave in NZ. Most of the cave is extremely well lit. Stranded in a cave is a tourist attraction in New Zealand. The official tour of the cave takes 45 minutes. This cave has a cafe and a gift shop. We didn't know it yet, but the next seven days will by far be the hardest of our entire lives. <laughs> Ruthless enough that we be- It's just standing. <laughs> crying out yeah i mean this is a very common theme in jimmy videos uh people being over emotional in situations that possibly do not warrant it ruthless enough that we begin to question if we could even get to the finish line now watch this video before this was a thrilling adventure that travels through the passages of the i'm not much of an adventurer but i did something like this <laughs> I don't know. I didn't cry about it. It was it was pretty brutal though. Of the Waitomo Caves. It involves swimming, jumping over cascading waterfalls, riding a tube, and marveling at the stunning limestone formations. The guides we had for this activity were very fun and entertaining. Yeah, this is just absolutely uh, okay. My mine didn't look like that at all. It rained like fucking hell. It, it wasn't a cave, it was like Wow, well, who cares? It was just climbing at the side of a mountain with like very steep and like the, it was raining super hard and it was kind of dark too. And like the, the water would up to bite like this this high. It was fucking bullshit. <laughs> that was the last time I tried something like that. I, I think people used to die there. Absolutely embarrassing. Also, keep in mind, I'm, I'm tall. Some people were like this or maybe this. <laughs> for Mr. Beast. Oh my god, guys, I'm stranded in a cave! Like, the editing is doing 99% of the work there, making it seem like they're in the middle of a storm, like a cave storm or something. It's literally a tourist attraction that takes 45 minutes to cross. By the way, I would have no problem if he said, oh, it's for kids, it's for entertainment, but instead, Mr. Beast goes on, like, every podcast, and he's like, I never fake videos, everything is real, and then he gets, like, legitimately triggered when people are like, oh, you fake your videos. Like, you're just lying to everybody. How can anybody trust you when it's so obvious you're faking everything and you're bullshitting Um, uh, kind of a little bit. Just gonna circle back to my story, even though it's not super relevant. The point is, probably not a lot of people would sign up for something, some kind, something like that. So that's why they're at a tourist attraction. <laughs> if they really sign up for something extreme, uh, yeah. I mean, you can see from what Jimmy is doing that for extreme stuff, he might just pick outsiders, and for light stuff, he picks content creators. Who? Like, like, total, you know, by, by any guy. Getting everyone. He also talks about the YouTuber challenge video. A lot of people were theorizing this was fixed because KSI and Logan Paul had special inside info. I've gathered 50 of the biggest YouTubers on the planet. And whichever one What's lasts longest in this queue would have million dollars for their subscribers. Right. Logan Paul and KSI didn't ride the bus to the location like the other contestants. You see, it's 50 YouTubers in a box fighting for a million dollars. Only 48 of the YouTubers in this event were on the bus. Two of them had already arrived early. And they're the first two people you see when you open the video. Logan Paul and KSI. I know what one of them is. What? Our biggest fan. For all of us, and they're gonna come out, and then Jimmy's gonna be like, if you can make this tree. How could you possibly know a detail that crucial before the game even started? In the giant Jenga game, everyone picked their closest friends, but Logan Paul and KSI chose the shortest people. It seems too strategic, as if they knew what the game would be. Logan Paul somehow picks the professional chef YouTuber who cooks for a living as his partner, Nick DiGiovanni. Coincidence? I think not. Bro, how'd you end up with Nick? He said it. That's crazy. I cooked. And the way Logan got eliminated. Big score. Wait, 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 wait. One time for one time, please, miss one. Oh! 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 Wait, you just left. I couldn't resist throwing a plate. That was a complete mistake. Dude, this is such scripted trash. This is just bad content at this point. I can't believe I actually thought his videos were real at one point. At this point, he just has to give us a list of the videos that are actually real because that would be easier than pointing out the fake ones. I survived seven days in an abandoned city. We just got dropped off in the middle. I mean, realistically, all should have some kind of a script. I mean, even the kind of videos that I make, I have some kind of an idea what, what I want them to be. Perhaps. <laughs> some, some might truly improvise, but.
the city, Dubrovnik, where the video was shot, is just a drive from the airport, and the access to the ruined yeah. complex in Kupari has been restricted due to the ongoing filming by Mr. Beast's crew, meaning Mr. Beast closed off the area to the public, particularly for the shooting of the video, and declared it abandoned. Yeah, my guess is if you looked hard enough, you could probably find inconsistencies in all these videos that prove that, you know, a large majority of them are fake as well. So you guys get the point. You know, cringe, cringe move, obviously. Anyways, just to be fair, I wanted to talk about an update regarding Dog Pack as well. He basically put out. I mean, fair enough. He's. He's. Claims are kind of the big problem here that, well, you, you can argue about the the morality, I suppose, but I'm not the moral police about, like, uh, trying to sell some candy or whatever. But like, if he didn't claim that the food he's selling is healthy and his videos are, like, super legit, I guess, I guess um, th this case would be pretty much a non-issue. Uh, uh, otherwise, aside from the so possibly sketchy stuff, which are mostly just allegations, put out this tweet where he said that the allegations he made against James Warren, the secret B CEO, for DV particularly, were likely not true, which undermines a lot uh -huh. of his credibility. Obviously sucks to hear, but I, I gotta be fair, I gotta call out BS when I see it, so that was definitely a huge L for dog pack. Yeah, that's an excellent point that Jimmy just needs to essentially date, assuming this blows over, for his critics to kind of shoot themselves in the foot, or uh, the public attention to die down. It doesn't need to do anything. You can just wait for the win. <clears throat> Pack, but it seems that a lot of the other allegations were credible considering we did get resolutions from the Jake Weddle thing. The Lakoya Hill allegation has been sort of uh, corroborated by the Trey guy as well. Anyways, we'll see what happens when Mr. Beast responds to everything else. If he ever does, I don't think he will. I think he's just moving on at this point considering he's realizing, oh, I can just continue posting videos and nobody really cares because the internet has a <laughs> memory of a goldfish. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. And oh, yeah. Yeah, but I want to see it. Assuming this works out, then everyone will be doing this. As usual. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye. Bye-bye.